Hello, Jeff Goodwin here. Welcome to my watercolour channel. This is the watercolour we're doing, just some um, old steps leading down onto the beach. And um, you can see a mountain there in the background. A bit of a closer look there. Some shadow going along the stairs coming out from those poles. Very um, small area for our sky because most of it is taken up with the foreground. So there's the drawing. I've already painted the sky and it's just, I've um, just used a cerulean blue, a little bit of yellow ochre. And uh, the mountain there is a ultramarine blue. And I'll be using a, um, a cobalt blue for the ocean, mixed with a little bit of um, ultramarine and cerulean. But I'll be bringing it uh, the colour back um, as well to a, a darker blue. Now I'm going to be bringing this brush across very quickly and I'll be laying it onto the side as I bring it across to create a sparkling effect. As you can see, I'll do that again. Just need to get the right amount of paint on there. And we'll, right where the um, water is coming onto the beach, we'll put a little bit of um, turquoise, just, just a little bit of turquoise, mixed in with um, some white watercolour paint. That's a bit of uh, white gouache I've got here, there, just to bring that back a bit. Now, that looks okay, but to me, that water looks a little bit too, I don't know, too vibrant or, or too, too light for me. It's not so much light, but it's just the color I don't, it's, it, I don't I want the, the ocean to be all that color. So I'm gonna bring it back with a, um, a darker, Bit of a darker colour. I will do that eventually. Um, this is olive green, but I'm going to uh, darken this up. I wasn't happy just with the olive green. Could have left it like that, but I just didn't think it stood out enough for me anyway. It's all right for a good base color though, so I'm just putting this down and some of it will show in the background or behind the darker colour that I put over this hill.
It's still olive green. Bit of a darker, bit of a more intense mixture there, but I, I'm going to go over that in places. I'm just leaving some gaps there because I want to create the impression of um, some sand uh, on the side of that hill there. I've left the light on it. Usually I like to paint just with natural light coming through the window. So you can see a bit, bit of my shadow there. That's because of the light that I left on overhead. I didn't realize it until I finished the painting. So, so I'm sorry about that. I just don't like the, um, the shadow as I'm painting. I like the natural light as much as possible. I know even outdoors, you get a bit of shadow when you're painting as well. But um, if I can cut that down as much as possible, I'd like to do that. You notice those hills are finished already. And I'll, I'm just gonna be working on them a little bit more, but I've actually put um, a bit of dark leaf green just over the top in places. And there's a little bit of um, uh, burnt umber in there too. So I'm pretty happy with those hills. Just putting the, um, the sand on the beach. I'd like to, I like to leave some areas of um, white paper, as you can see. I don't want to make it all that colour, which is a very light wash of um, yellow ochre, very light wash of it, and a tiny bit of uh, peach in there as well. I'm just bringing back in areas with some white wash there, just a little bit. Just taking off some of those hard edges of that uh, water. And I want to put on, in that area that I was just painting, I want to put a turquoise in there as well. You can see I brought the ocean back. It's a lot darker compared to what it used to be, which uh, I'm happy about. And that, that was just uh, using um, a little bit of ultramarine blue with a, with a bit of um, cobalt in there as well, but I didn't want it to be completely uh, overtaken by, by um, ultramarine. Uh, not ultramarine blue, I beg your pardon, Prussian blue and a little bit of cobalt. I didn't want too much Prussian in there. Okay, so here is, I think, we're going to put on the turquoise. 
yes just a very light amount of turquoise it's watered down quite a bit I'm drying the brush off so it's now a damp brush but uh, fairly dry but damp and I'm just bringing that out blending it into the sand there we go Painting the stairs now. That's um, yellow ochre there. We're going to go over this with a few, a few colours, including um, burnt umber. We'll go use some of that as well. This is a sort of a mustardy colour. Um, I don't know the name of it because um, it's just a colour that I have, and uh, I'm just going to keep using it, experimenting with it until I use it up. But I, I don't know what the name of it is. You see the colour there? Maybe some of you know what it is and you can tell me in the comments below. Um, but I don't like it so much. It's okay. I'll put another colour or blend another colour in with it. I also want to put some white gouache on these stairs as well. Leading down onto the beach. That's um, uh, burnt sienna, that, that uh, colour that I'm putting on there. Back to some yellow ochre. Just dragging it through with my round brush. Just smoothing that out there.
We've got more burnt sienna, rather um, burnt umber. We want to put down on these stairs. We want more definition in those stairs, so uh, we're going to be putting some um, burnt umber in really a fairly um, strong um, impression of burnt umber going in there. We'll be going in even stronger yet again in parts on these stairs. go back to those stairs I'm um, just starting on these um, poles here which go down either side of the stairs and this is just yellow ochre but I'll be putting a burnt umber over that eventually we'll and we'll put a little bit of Payne's grey a bit later on in part in parts over those poles so you can see where the horizon is it's um, almost to the top of the page it's okay to have your horizon there or um, you know you can have it uh, the same distance down the page again you can have your horizon halfway but that's not a good idea to have your horizon halfway it's better that you have your horizon anywhere else except halfway although that's not an out and out rule sometimes um, yeah, you can have your horizon halfway and it can look very very effective depending on what you're painting but generally it looks better and more pleasing to the eye if your horizon is not exactly um, half the distance on your paper so if you have your horizon quarter way up that's fine even a little bit further up than that but just not halfway and in this case, our horizon is almost to the top of the page, and that's fine too. So we'll go over some of those poles with a little bit of Payne's Grey, just in areas. Now this is where I'm coming in a bit stronger with the burnt umber.
nice and bold. Just working in these colours here. I want some white on those stairs as well. Give the impression that perhaps there's some sand on the stairs or something like that. And we want some, um, some grass. Grass and weed weedy grass and and uh, beach grass coming up around those poles as well. Uh, this is using Leaf Green, L-E-A-F, Leaf Green by Reeves, Reeves, R-E-E-V-E-S, -E Reeves Watercolour, watercolours, and yeah, it's a really lovely, really lovely colour, it's nice to, uh, nice base colour, which will show through the other grasses that we'll eventually put in with another colour. This is using SAP, S-A-P, SAP Green now. The 
it's, uh, it's a nice colour as well, the sap green. Also by Reeves. Alright, so now we're using dark leaf green. No, we're not. We're still using sap green. My apologies. So there's a combination of leaf green, sap green, olive green, and we'll be putting some dark leaf green on there soon as well. It's um, burnt sienna. That's a bit of white gouache now. Just bringing that back a tiny bit. with the olive green just uh, bringing those grasses through a bit So a bit of white gouache on those stairs in places. Just 
dragging the brush through. Now don't forget we've still got the dark leaf green, which we're putting on the grass uh, over the grass a little bit, like so, using the rigger brush. This just adds a bit more depth to the painting, this darker grass. And another thing that will cause some depth is when we put the shadow of some of those poles in as well, running along the stairs. Australian dark leaf green going in here on the base of these poles, some grasses. Got a few splotches on my painting on the left hand top corner, you can see. So I'll just dab that off with a tissue. And then um, it won't, won't go off completely because it's a darker colour. So I'm going to have to, once I lift off what I can, just use a little bit of white wash to go over those areas. So it was just a, a dry towel, which lifted the paint off, almost off. So I'll just go over that area now with um, a bit of white wash, where I made that mistake there by flicking some paint off my brush. By mistake, that can happen. The dark leaf green is a really lovely colour. I'm just painting the, the bits of rope or chain, whatever it happens to be, linking these poles together.
that looks all right. Putting some darker, dark leaf green just down the base of some of these hills, just in spots. It'll make it stand out even more. That's the struggling dark leaf green going on there. This is Payne's grey going in here on the poles. And we'll put a bit of white, just a bit of white gouache, randomly on some of those poles. It'll be the sun hitting the poles. Here we go. Just a bit of sunlight. Putting some shadow down now, coming out from this piece of land. Just a subtle light wash of shadow.
Well, that's just about it. Looking all right. That's the shadow I'm painting in there now, using a violet color. And we need just some um, different shapes of uh, shadow through where this scraggly grass is right here. Okay, I think we can take the masking tape off fairly soon. Just signing my name very quickly down there. There we go, pulling it away from the paper as usual. Using 300 GSM, 300 GSM watercolor paper. It's a cotton watercolor paper. And so that's it. Uh, just some uh, random old stairs leading down to a beach. That's it there, completed. Um, just very free and easy going. That chain there on the, uh, on the pole, right at the front on the left hand side, I could have made that rope or that chain disappear out of the painting. Could have brought it right up to the border, perhaps. But it looks all right the way it is. Just up close now. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and I'll have another watercolour soon.